Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good day, viewers. I welcome you to Daily Fountain Devotional. Today, being the 16th of August, 2024, let us pray. Our Father will thank you for granting us good night's sleep and making us to wake up today. Lord, as we meditate on your word, we ask that you speak to us and transform our lives. Be at liberty to do something in our lives. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Our text for today is taken from Genesis chapter 33 from verse 1 to 20. Genesis 33 from verse 1 to 20. Jacob looked up and there was Esau coming with his 400 men. So he divided the children among Glia, Rachel and the two female servants. He put the female servants and their children in front, Leah and his children next, and Rachel and Joseph in the rear. He himself went on ahead and bowed down to the ground seven times as he approached his brother. But Esau ran to meet Jacob and embraced him. He threw his arms around his neck and kissed him, and they wept. Then Esau looked up and saw the women and children. Who are these with you? He asked. Jacob answered, They are the children God has graciously given your servant. Then the female servants and their children approached and bowed down. Next, Leah and her children came and bowed down. Last of all came Joseph and Rachel, and they too bowed down. Esau asked, What's the meaning of all these flocks and heads I met? To find favor in your eyes, my Lord, he said. But Esau said, I already have plenty, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. No, please, said Jacob. If I have found favor in your eyes, accept this gift from me. For to see your face is like seeing the face of God, now that you have received me favorably. Please accept the present that was brought to you. For God has been gracious to me, and I have all I need. And Jacob insisted. Esau accepted it. Then Esau said, Let us be on our way. I will accompany you. But Jacob said to him, My Lord knows that the children are tender, and that I must care for the elves and cows, and are that are nurturing their young. If they are driven hard just one day, all the animals will die. So let my Lord go on ahead of his servants while I move along slowly at the pace of the flocks and heads before me and the pace of the children until I come to my Lord in Seir. Esau said, Then let me leave some of my men with you. But why do that? Jacob asked. Just let me find favor in the eyes of my Lord. So that day Esau started on his way back to Seir. Jacob, however, went to Sukkot, where he built a place for himself and made shelters for his livestock. For his livestock. That is why the place is called Sukkot. After Jacob came from Padam Aram, he arrived safely at the city of Shechem in Canaan and camped within sight of the city for a hundred pieces of silver he bought from the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, the plot of ground, where he pitched his tent. There he set up an altar and called it El Elohe Israel. Praise the Lord. Our topic for today says, Be reconciled to God. 
Reconciliation is one of the things that shows sincerity of repentance. By the way, what's the meaning of the word reconciliation? What does it mean to reconcile? According to Merriam-Webster Dictionary, the word reconcile means to restore friendship and harmony. So when you restore your relationship with someone, you are restoring friendship and harmony. So when we are talking about restoring or being reconciled to God, when we are talking about being reconciled to God, we are talking about having a relationship with God restored instead of how it was when gap began to exist between us and God, probably because of sin. In our relationships with human beings, from time to time, we will notice that human beings offend us or will have issues with human beings. And some of these issues are capable of making us to have strained relationship with them. When, the, when strained relationship exists, we are supposed to take step in order to be reconciled with the people. But the very first step that we must take that will push us to reconcile with any human being we have issues with is the first step of being reconciled to God. A man or a woman who has not been reconciled to God may not see the need to be reconciled to fellow men. And that's why today we are spending time to talk about being reconciled to God. In the text we read today, we can see that a reconciliation took place between Jacob and Esau. Many of us as Bible students know the history of Jacob and Esau. How they parted ways, how Jacob left, probably because he saw Esau was angry and so on. And in Genesis chapter 27 verse 41, the Bible clearly tells us that Esau was very mad at Jacob. In fact, he hated Jacob and was determined to harm him. He was determined to kill him. But here today, we are seeing Esau meeting with Jacob after several years. And instead of carrying out any harm, he was able to hug Jacob. He was able to welcome him. Both of them cried together. Their relationship was restored. Whatever would make Esau to forget what he felt Jacob did to him, and he is relating with Jacob in this manner after several years, must have come from an encounter with God. It must have come from a life that had been restored, a life that had been reconciled with God. Because there are matters as human beings we will are allowed to stretch when we are not reconciled to God. But when we become reconciled to God, when our relationship with God is restored, no matter the pain we felt, no matter how we felt that we were hurt, we will make, take steps in order to restore the relationship that have been strained. As I studied in this place and as I was reflecting, on the concept of reconciliation with God, I began to ask myself, what are reasons, what are the things that severe our relationship with God? What are the things that can affect our relationships with God such that we will need it to be reconciled to God? Number one is sin. Sin, no matter how pleasurable it may seem, creates a gap between us and God. Whenever we begin to live in sin, a gap is existing, it begin, a gap begins to exist between us and God. And if our relationship with God will be restored to what it used to be, if our relationship with God will come back to what it used to be, then there is the need for us to ensure that we are reconciled to God so that that gap will stop existing. 
Another thing that severs our relationship with God and creates a gap is guilt. Sometimes people sin against God and after a while they come to their senses, they feel bad that they had sinned against God and having felt that they sinned against God, some of them, the, the weight of the guilt, the weight of what they did, some people, the weight of what they did uh, uh, rests on them so, so much that they begin to feel that God cannot even forgive them. They begin to feel that they have so much uh, uh, offended God that they cannot be restored. And uh, of course, you know that when someone is living in guilt, that is the activity of Satan. It is Satan who makes people to feel that, look, you have sinned against God. You cannot be restored. God is not happy with you. God is not going to take you back. It can only be Satan that can do that. And when we are living in guilt, our relationship with God will not be as it used to be. And for us to restore our relationship with God, we needed to thrash that guilt and we needed to embrace God and ensure that our relationship with God is restored and ensure that we are reconciled with God. Another thing that can make people to have severe relationship with God is offense. Sometimes when people are offended by other human beings, they feel so hot that the, 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 the weight of the offense overwhelms them so that it begins to affect their relationship with God. They are overwhelmed by how they feel bad about what the other person had done to them such that their relationship with God is affected because, because they will start nurturing the, the, the thought of bringing about vengeance, the thought of harming the other person, the thought of paying back. And you know, when any human being is, is nurturing, when any human being is brooding and reflecting on going to hit the other person, going to pay the other person back with evil, when you are thinking like that, there is no how you can have good relationship with God. Probably, it's possible that that was the situation of uh, Esau. He must have felt bad so much how uh, uh, Jacob took the blessing such that he was determined to cause him harm. But whatever that happened between that time and now shows that the relationship of Esau, that Esau has been reconciled to God. And I speak to you that is listening to me today. It is possible that someone had offended you. It is possible that someone had hurt you in the past and you are, you've been overwhelmed by the hurt, by the way you felt such that it, it began to affect your relationship with God. I encourage you, today, you need to be reconciled with God. You need to listen to the instruction in the Word of God according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, that says, be reconciled to God. And you know, every genuine reconciliation with God should be followed up with reconciliation with men. Because if one claims to love God, whom you are not seeing physically, but you find it difficult to love people you are seeing physically, then there is a big question mark to your claim of loving God. In the same vein, if one claims to be reconciled to God, and the person finds it difficult to be reconciled with another brother or another sister. The person finds it difficult to go to reconcile with another brother or another sister that the person had severed relationship with. It cuts a very big question mark to the sincerity of the person's reconciliation with God. Now the question is, why should we be reconciled with God? The question is, why should we prioritize reconciliation with God? Number one is that reconciliation with God brings peace. The Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 48 verse 22 that there is no peace for the wicked. 
there is no how anyone can have a genuine peace. There is no how anyone can have a long-lasting peace unless the person is reconciled with God. Go and ask some people that are very rich and influential. Some people are very rich and influential. With their money, they can buy anything money can buy. But if you ask them and they are sincere to you, they will still tell you that they don't have peace in their lives. So that is why if any one of us desires to have peace, if any one of us desires to enjoy long-lasting peace in this life, then you must be reconciled with God. It is possible that you have derailed, you have fallen from your, from your first love, and you have derailed from how you used to be committed to God, and because you have derailed from how you used to be committed to God, you no longer have peace in your life. Other people may think that everything is okay, but you know that everything is not okay. Today is the day. You need to say no to the devil. Today is the day you need to say enough is enough. Today is the day you need to reconcile with God. I remember when I was younger, I used to have issue with my parents and they kept complaining. One morning, my late father spoke to me and advised me after he finished advising me, it dawned on me that if I must have a restored relationship with my parents, I needed to be reconciled with God. And that morning I knelt down in our sitting room and I asked Jesus to come into my life as my Lord and personal Savior. And that was how the story changed. And that was how the story changed. I began to have peace in my life. And peace began to exist between me and my parents. If we understand the importance of being reconciled with God, then we prioritize it. Another importance is that it gives us coverage. You know, when a mother hen is moving, and sometimes a mother hen envisages danger, a mother hen will gather the chicks around her in order to give them cover. In the same vein, when you reconcile with God, you are under God's coverage. That's why the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10, the Bible says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and they are saved. But when you are not reconciled with God, when you stray away from how you are supposed to live, when you don't have a good relationship with God, what will happen is that you, be, you, 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 you actually stray away and because you stray away, you are not under divine coverage. And because you are not under divine coverage, your life is exposed to predators. Your life is exposed to the enemy. The enemy can do anything. The enemy can use you as a guinea pig. The enemy can use you as a, an, an instrument of experimentation because you are not under divine coverage. Another reason why we should be reconciled with God is to escape eternal damnation. The Bible tells us in John chapter 3 verse 18 that whoever does not believe is condemned already because the person did not believe in Jesus. The situation of someone that does not believe in Jesus that is already condemned is the same as the situation of someone that is not reconciled with God. Even though the person used to be a child of God, but the person is no longer in the faith, the person has derailed, such people are the same thing. For anyone that is not reconciled with God, eternal damnation is hanging over the person's shoulders. Because if rapture takes place, or if the person dies in that state, the person will end up in hellfire. And the Bible clearly tells us that hell is real and heaven is real. So why another reason we should be reconciled with God is to escape eternal damnation in order not to end up in hell fire. Because that is how as many that are not reconciled with God will end up. Now having said that, it's possible someone listening to me 
is asking, how then do I get reconciled with God? To be reconciled with God, first of all, you have to come to the understanding that you have sinned against God. Reconciliation with God begins with the understanding that I have sinned against God. In Luke chapter 15, verse 18, the younger son said, I will go to my father and I will say to him, I have sinned against you and against seven, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of your servants. So reconciliation with God begins with, with you having the understanding that you have sinned against God. Some people are still living the way they are living up till now because they have not come to the understanding, they have not come to that conviction that they have sinned against God. One of the things I am praying that God will do for you listening to me today if you are living a life of sin is that God that the Holy Spirit will bring that conviction in you that you have sinned against God it is only when that conviction comes upon you that you begin to draw closer to God and of course the Bible says that if you draw closer to God that God will draw closer to you so the starting point of being reconciled to God is the starting point of having the conviction that you have sinned against God now the next thing you need to do is to ask for forgiveness the bible says in first john chapter 1 verse 19 that if we confess our sins that god is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from from all unrighteousness so when you when it has dawned on you that you have sinned against god you need to ask god for forgiveness you need to confess your sins before god sincerely you need to ask god to forgive you you need to ask god to cancel your name in the book of death, to write your name in the book of life. You need to tell God that you are sorry, that you are seeking forgiveness and restoration. David did not mean what David did not waste time when he was confronted by Samuel that he was the person that Samuel was talking about. He began to ask for forgiveness. He began to ask the Lord not to cast him away from his presence but to restore the right spirit in him, according to Psalm 55 from verse 10 following. The next thing you need to do to be reconciled with God is that you must depart from iniquity. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, the Bible says, God's solid foundation stands firm, sealed with this inscription, the Lord knows those who are his, and whoever named the name of the Lord should depart from iniquity. It is not enough to be convinced or convicted of your sin it is not enough to ask for forgiveness and you continue to live in sin when you are convicted of your sin when you ask for forgiveness you must intentionally depart from iniquity the bible says in hebrew chapter 12 verse 1 that since we are surrounded by such a cloud of witnesses let us throw off every sin that hinders the bible talks about in that scripture, according to some, uh, some uh, translation, the Bible talks about the sin that so easily entangles us. So you must, you must remove yourself. You must decide not to be a slave again of any sin that so easily entangles you. That's how to be reconciled with God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, the Lord calls us to be reconciled with God. Are you listening to me today? And you've observed that your relationship with God is no longer how it used to be. You've noticed that you have wandered away. You have strayed away. The, the kind of uh, feeling that you experience in your spirit of God, about God's presence in you, you are no longer feeling it. You are no longer experiencing it. That's an indication that you need to be reconciled with God. And you don't need to postpone it. Today is the time. And as you decide today to be reconciled to God, God himself will reconcile himself with you. Let us pray. And so, Father, we thank you for speaking to us today about being reconciled with you. Lord, anyway, we have strayed from your presence. Anyway, we have wandered away from how we're supposed to live. Lord, we ask that you bring us back. Help us, O oh God, to take this decision to be reconciled with you 
and as we take the decision, help us to live up to this decision. Receive our glory, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.